to order. We'll see the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, please have all cell phones silenced during the meeting. Uh, Item four, announcement, the village board will convene in a closed session called under state statutes 1985-1E for the purpose of deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties. The investing or public funds or conducting other specific public business whenever compared to bargaining reasons require closed sessions. Uh, discussion on the Lion Energy substation project and related purchase. Uh, item five, I look for an approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item six, the public, public appearances and citizens comments. There's no one in the gallery, so we'll move on to number seven, approval of the consent agenda. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8, new board business. <coughs> Item 8, discussion potential amendments to village ordinances 269-2A and B related to room tax from the Historical Preservation Commission. Sean? I requested that this item be added to the agenda, um, so I'm going to make it as brief as I possibly can. Um, in short summary, the Historic Preservation Commission, which I'm chairing, um, decided as a group to approach the Tourism Commission uh, with a proposal and a request to increase the room tax in the village of New Glarus from 5% to 7%. And the reason behind that request was that over the next five years, the chalet is facing almost $30,000 in financial need which of course we all know the village is not able to afford. And through grant writing alone, they won't be able to cover all of the improvements to the property that are needed. There are also significant financial needs at the Swiss Historical Village. So we asked both of those entities to put together a five-year plan outlining what financial need exists and prioritize projects over that five-year plan um, so that we could get an idea as to spending levels and need. So um, I presented the PowerPoint in your packets, but I'd like to first just quickly start, if you could reference page 25. I asked Brian to um, include the notes from that joint meeting, um, and so you can see those notes there. Um, and then if you would like to reference our current um, municipal code regarding room tax, that's on page 23 of the packets. So it's specifically item 269-2, the imposition of tax. So as our code currently reads, we charge a room tax of 5%. That 5% room tax is um, directed annually um, in four quarterly installments to the chamber at 90%. The remaining 10% of that income is split between the village and the entities charging the room tax with the village taking 7% and the entities splitting the remaining three. So uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I gave to the Tourism Commission starts on page 27 of your packets. You can see, I'm not gonna go through every single slide verbatim because I trust a lot of you probably read through this before, but just to quickly summarize, slide number two on page 27 references the 2014 Historic Condition Report for the chalet which is included on your packets um, on page 47. It's quite a lengthy document. If you haven't read it, I would, I would ask you to review that. Um, the five-year plan that I referenced for the chalet is noted at the bottom of slide two on page 27, and that's actually included in your packets on page 32. So if you want to take a look at all of those financial needs the chalet is spelling out. Um, moving to page 28, you can see a summary of the needs of the Swiss Historical Village. 
Um, and there's a memo regarding that as well on page 33 from the Swiss Historical Village Leadership, which outlines their projects over the next five years. They involve painting, uh, physical upgrades to a bunch of their buildings. They do everything on a rotating cycle, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Um, so from there, I moved into the direct ask of the Tourism Commission, which was we'd like to request that you raise the room tax from 5% to 7%. And then uh, moving on to page 29, slide five of my presentation, I gave a brief history of the room tax um, in case the members of the Tourism Commission weren't familiar. So the room tax ordinance was established in the year 2000. Um, as I mentioned, it's chapter 269 of the village ordinances. Um, it's only increased once since its inception, and that was in 2009. And you can see that reflected in the minutes from that Tourism Commission, which are actually on page 39. But I also included other copies of the Tourism Commission's meeting minutes from pages 35 to 39 of your packet, where you can see that discussion of the room tax has been happening for nine years and there has been no action. So um, currently, um, as I mentioned, 90% of the proceeds go to tourism, and that tourism entity, as chosen by the Tourism Commission, is the Chamber. 7% of those proceeds go to the Village for Administrative Costs, and the remaining 3% go to the businesses collecting the tax. So um, to break it down for you a little bit into numbers, um, slide number 6 on page 29, um, references a 2016 room tax report as well as a 2017 room tax report. 2016 was the first year that the state of Wisconsin Department of Revenue required municipalities to report tax revenue from a room tax. And so 2016 is the first year that I was able to find officially through the DOR's website on those numbers. So you can see those official reports on page 40 and page 43, respectively, for 2016 and 2017. Um, but in summary, for the year 2017, you can see that there was $76,536 collected. That means that an estimated total tax revenue existed of about $1.5 million. So increasing the room tax to 7% would have brought in approximately $107,000 um, and then the increase there would be 30000 and some dollars. So moving on to slide, uh, sorry, page 30, slide 7. What I proposed, what the Historic Preservation Commission and I decided to propose at the joint tourism meeting was a revised scenario. Um, so we would, we wanted to respectfully ask for an increase from 5 to 7%, but then we also wanted to ask for an update to the ordinance to, increase, um, to diversify the distribution of those funds. So we have included two proposed scenarios. Um, in scenario one on slide seven of page 30, you can see that we are recommending 70% of the tax revenue funds continue to go to the chamber and 20% go to historic preservation needs. That means based upon a 7% room tax rate and a 2017 tax revenue of 1.5 and change, the chamber would receive roughly the same amount at about $75,005, and historic preservation would receive $21,430. Scenario two gives a greater percentage to the chamber, 75% um, and 15% to historic preservation, and again, this is at a 7% rate based upon the 2017 taxable revenue of about 1.5, and so cham the chamber would then receive more money, which would be 80363 and historic preservation would receive about $16,000. Um, in preparation for opposition from the Tourism Commission, I went through the process of making a reservation at both the chalet and at the Swiss Air for the night of that meeting on November 13th. And you can see the data on slide number eight of page 30 for major lobsting Lodging option number one, which we can all deduce is the chalet. Um, for a standard suite for two adults, the rate is $110. With current taxes, I've outlined the numbers there. So increasing from 5% to 7% would result in a total room rate of $123.75, which is an increase of $2.20 per night. For the Swiss Air, you can see the difference where the rate is $80 per night for a standard king room for one adult. 
you can see the current tax rate reflected there, and then with the updated increase to 7%, the rate would be 90 instead of 88.40, which is an increase of $1.60 per night. So in the opinion of the Historic Preservation Commission, not a lot to ask for a really great reward that could help us in preserving historic landmarks in the village that really need a lot of help. Um, on slide 30, uh, slide 9, uh, page 31, I've included comparisons for you to reference throughout the state of Wisconsin. <coughs> you can see other municipalities or cities or towns and their rates. Uh, so then just in conclusion on page 31, uh, slide 10, we asked again for the room tax to be raised to 7% effective January 1. Um, I will tell you at that meeting we did receive opposition from the members of the Tourism Commission, specifically Brad Beal and Eric Bobley and Mike Bell. Mike Bell is serving on the Tourism Commission in place of Brianna Luxinger, and she's on maternity leave right now. Kay Gamer, um, a member of the Tourism Commission, did support this matter um, and actually made a motion, which you can reference in the minutes that I showed you earlier, but the motion did not receive a second, so there was no vote. Um, Mike Bell from the Chalet did bring paperwork with him, which you can see on page 69 of your packet. And this is a print off from the Wisconsin Hotel and Lodging Association, which is not an official government entity. It's an association that serves Wisconsin hotels and lodges. Um, so the argument from the Tourism Commission primarily was that room tax dollars cannot be spent on physical upgrades to a building or museum. So that's actually incorrect. I called the Department of Revenue for clarification, and if you flip the page to page 70, you can see that um, from 2015 to 2017, there were biennial budget revisions to municipal room tax, and this is an official memo from the Legislative Council. Underneath the section labeled room tax purpose and use, I'll read directly aloud, Wisconsin law requires that certain percentages of room tax revenues, as discussed below, must be spent on tourism promotion and tourism development. Further on <coughs> down in the paragraph, those are outlined as one, marketing projects, two, transient tourist informational services, and three, tangible municipal development, including a convention center. I will point out that this language does not say excluding physical improvements to properties. On page 71, underneath the section titled Room Tax Rates and Expenditure Levels, I will read directly for you. For municipalities that adopted a room tax after May 13, 1994, the village of New Glarus, the room tax rate may be no higher than 8%, and at least 70% of the room tax collections must be dedicated to expenditures related to tourism promotion and development. The last sentence here is the key for me. Therefore, up to 30% of room tax collections may be directed to general municipal expenditures. So there is nothing in the Wisconsin state statutes that would prohibit us from raising our room tax and redirecting a small percentage of that increased revenue to historic preservation needs in the village. So I did not request this to be added to the agenda tonight because I wanted action, but I want to discuss it because I think as you can see um, in the attachments that I included for all of the minutes from the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, it's been discussed since the year 2000 and there has been no action. It has only been increased once and then that was in 2009, which was almost 10 years ago, um, and it was increased 2% points at that time. So in my mind, it's been almost 10 years, it's time for another 2% increase. There's nothing that should be prohibiting us from doing it. There's significant financial need at the chalet specifically, um, less so at the Swiss Historical Village because a lot of you know they have a lot of private funding. Um, but in my mind, this is kind of a no-brainer. Um, and so I, I wanna just quickly point out too that the members of this tourism commission that we met with have lived here their entire lives. All of them, born and raised in New Glarus, to my knowledge. Not maybe, Brad. maybe not Brad, I'm, so I'm mistaken on Brad. But has spent a considerable amount of his adult life in the village of New Glarus. Has been involved with the village board at the Swiss Historical Village, now on tourism. All of these people have been here far longer than I have. Um, I am now in my third year of residence in the village. 
was elected to this board to serve the community, and I am fighting for money to protect historic landmarks that are important to the history and the Swiss culture of this village. So three years here, and I seem to care more about it than the Tourism Commission does. Um, and I also did receive a little bit of a counterpoint at that meeting um, regarding, you know, like what's the visitorship numbers, or how many people are going to these places, et cetera, et cetera. But my argument to that is it doesn't matter because, um, and the reference to the, the example that I used was, um, you know, I, I grew up on the East Coast, I'm from the state of Maine, and I've been to New York City many times, but I've never been to the Statue of Liberty. But does that mean that the Statue of Liberty doesn't need to be preserved and protected? So I want to discuss it with the group, and if anybody has any thoughts they'd like to share or questions they'd like to ask. We've talked about it a lot at, at Historic Preservation. Um, as I said, Kay is a strong advocate, but the remaining members of the Tourism Commission are not. Um, and so I know that this is somewhat unprecedented to bring this to the full village board above and beyond the Tourism Commission. Um, but I would like to see some action soon. Um, there can't be any tonight because we didn't add it as an action item. But I mean, I, I just look for your thoughts and support on the issue. I do have a couple questions. Um, first of all, how much the state dictates that the 80 80%, 70%, and then it I had it written down here that it mm -hmm. uh, divides it out. Correct. What control then do we have as a village board to designate those expenditures, or is it I mean, who? How do we decide on how to designate that? Just at the board level, we can do that. Correct. Okay. All we all we need to do is to update Chapter Two Sixty Nine of the Municipal so, Ordinances. And that's, and yeah. That's all because as it's currently stated, um, the Tourism Commission selects the entity in which the funds are to be directed, um, but the Village Board can overrule the Tourism Commission. And then when you talked with the state. You specifically explained to them that it would be for restoration and improvement for a historical structure. And maintenance, yeah. And they said? The person that I spoke with said specifically um, the language is outlined in that attachment that I referenced. Yeah. To say it a different way, there is, if a municipality were to decide to use up to 30%, mm -hmm. not for tourism promotion, but for general municipal expenditures, there is no statewide restriction on how those 30% up to 30% could be expended. Correct, and that's on page 70 and 71. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, but I'm glad. Um, so are you anticipating that then the monies um, would, the your um, Historic Preservation um, Commission would recommend to the board how to d disperse the funds yeah. every year? Yeah. I would think that would be a process. That's kind of the tentative plan, Petra. Um, there is no specific um, you know, set of procedure yet. Right. Um, right. But what we're hoping for is that we could at least get some action moving forward on raising the room tax and updating the distribution of the profits from the room tax right. such that the Historic Preservation Commission could oversee that percentage of the room tax right quote-unquote dividends for distribution to entities that need it. Yeah. Perhaps it could be set up similar to what the Community Foundation does in which people request yeah. assistance and funding. I thought of one other thing that possibly could come under this would be the floral clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is maintained by the village, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it would be nice to have some other funding source for that. Yeah. Well, we had quite Correct. a big um, chunk of you know, a year or two ago. Yeah, and you know, the, it, the comparison yeah. list that I included uh, yeah. towards the end of that PowerPoint presentation, yes. most of those municipalities don't see the visitorship that New Blairis does. I mean, we have festivals almost every weekend throughout the summer season. And the argument that you will hear from the lodging um, community in town is that, well, our rates go up so that the amount that the rate will change per night is going to go up. But, I mean, nobody is telling them to raise their rates during it's those It's contrary months. to <laughs> mm -hmm. why they're here. They're, yeah. they're here because of tourism, and so mm -hmm. if you promote and restore the buildings, you yeah. want tourism to restore the buildings, then you get 
more, more tourists. Yeah. Correct. It so will be more attractive to so, people yeah. to come. It's like, Correct. it gives them those, another option of things sites. to do other than Correct. drink in the beer tent. Well, and yeah. one and of the get, things that we did also receive inquiries about was, you know, like, well, why aren't the chalet and the Swiss Historical Village doing more on digital media platforms such as the social channels like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., to attract a different demographic to their properties? So the argument to that is that Denise Wright does a lot of social work for the Swiss Historical Village. I myself am training Sandy and Mary on how to use social platforms to promote the chalet. I have a background in social strategy from the time I spent at Harvard University managing digital communications for the medical school. So it's not like they aren't learning and that we're not taking actions to correct um, and to try and reach that different demographic. One of the things that the Historical Preservation Commission is also looking at doing is partnering with the Chamber of Commerce to create a downloadable application for your mobile phones through iTunes and Google Play Store so that when people come to town and they check into one of our hotels or Airbnbs, etc., they can easily download a historic Nublaris or just Nublaris mobile app and it has a welcome page and then an easy to navigate menu with all of our historic points of interest that would open up on an interactive Google map so you could easily guide yourself through a walking tour to find those places that you might not know about coming here without that information. Well, and frankly, since, you know, <coughs> since the tourism is, is the uh, commission is receiving 70% of the funding now. 90%. 90%. Now. Why are they not promoting, you know, or should, should they not be promoting some of this stuff as, as, as part of the tourist experience in the blurs. Yeah. If they're not doing that, they're not doing their job either. <coughs> I would agree with that. You're meaning the chamber, correct? When you're saying that? Because the money goes to the chamber. <coughs> and we're, I'm not sitting here saying that the chamber doesn't promote those entities, the chalet and the Swiss Historical Village. I think that there is a lot that's done for them. Okay. Um, but I think there could potentially be more. <coughs> well, definitely an expansion. Yeah. And, uh, what could you put your finger on the opposition? Other, was it basically that our rates will go up? Is that, is that the reason? The, well, there were two major points of opposition. One was the um, misconception on page 69 from the document Mike Bell brought that the funds can't be spent on physical improvements to properties. Uh, but then there was also the argument that um, the money should be spent solely on promotion and marketing. For getting people to town, so but having nice places to visit gets people to town. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, nobody exactly. wants to go to see the chalet of the Golden Fleece and get rained on from the inside. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so, as a board, what is our what is the next step? What do we? Well, tonight we're discussing, um, but if there's interest and. You know, a desire to move forward, I think that we could request that an action item be added to our next agenda um, <coughs> to consider updates to the ordinances that would need to be updated. Uh, that, that, that is one item uh, that the board could take. I would also say it would be good to uh, publish it in the newspaper as a public hearing notice, just so that, um, like we do with other ordinances that we review and adopt, that it's out there mm -hmm. and the public is made aware of it before the board would take any action mm -hmm. on it. It, in this case, it would be more of a courtesy notice than anything else. Um, but that could be done prior to the meeting. Should we discuss the tax increase? Or <coughs> five to seven? I remember, correct me if I'm right, did we have a discussion on 5.5 once? When we went to 5.5 and it was not approved? I don't remember when that occurred. I recall. Yeah, but, that sounds but I don't, if it was, maybe I don't think it was discussed in the context that no, the, no. the monies would go to a... Of what to do. No, right, it was just a discussion just, of what, whether right. they should be increased. From, yeah. I just remember that sometime at some point. Yeah, Were you going to say something, Chuck? Uh, a little bit off of your subject, but how do we um, make sure that the money that goes to the Joe Blow, 
rent rents out of uh, rooms yeah. on a regular basis. I think Brian can answer Advertising, that. Advertising. Brian can give you the definitive answer, but my understanding is that if you're renting and you're um, participating in sites like VRBO or HomeAway or Airbnb, you're required to register with the municipality and report the tax. What if you're not? If we catch wind of one that's not on one of those sites, then we, we send them a letter saying, thou shall register with us, and we will collect tax. Just we check the sites. Way. We check the sites like once every month, every couple of months. We sites meaning out. like Craigslist, Facebook, by well, how do we, we can't turn it all. Yeah. Well, we can't do it I all, know. but <clears throat> we can do what we can. And we've caught probably three of them in the last that way. Is there a <laughs> Is there a state definition of if you are a uh, if you are subject to a room tax like mm -hmm. ten days and mm -hmm. one year mm -hmm. or because if you do it for three days or whatever I don't know if you're required. yeah there is a state definition that we have to follow. Yeah. So if someone is just renting out a room or rooms say um, on Facebook would you be searching that? Uh, no, because I know it happens, and I know it's a regular occurrence. Yeah. It's an ongoing. Facebook is tough for us to search. It just, I mean, it's just the expanse is so wide that we could just say I would imagine that it happens more so during festival weekends. Not all the time. Probably uh, anything happens more during festival yeah. weekends, but mm -hmm. um, I just know that there are more than a few entities doing it. Do you, do you just stumble upon them? Is that how you see them? Or do you just hear about it? Or? You just hear about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I would say in that instance specifically, I mean, we can all do a good job of reporting to Lynn what we hear about those types of things so that action can be taken and follow up. Maybe it's, maybe it's self-enforcing in that if, if, if we, and I hope we do go ahead, something here, um, those people that are in the business will report those that aren't, Yeah. because um, they're most likely to hear about it. Yeah, I, I think that that probably but really it's worth happens to a little bit of a degree. Something to keep in mind, though, I, never, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. Um, well, I did. You don't rooms. <laughs> For that meeting on, that we had with the Tourism Commission on the 13th, I did prepare numbers that would show what the differences would be um, at different rates. So I did calculations for 5.5, 6, and 6.5. <coughs> so um, going back to the 2017 <coughs> taxable revenue of about 1.53 million, <coughs> if the rate was 5.5%, it would be an increase of about $7,600 to 84190 so then dividing that distribution, the chamber would receive at 75.15, the chamber would get 63.143, and historic would get about 12,500. Um, at 6%, it would increase the taxable revenue, um, and the new total would be 91,843, which is an increase of about 15 grand, 300. And then the chamber then would receive at 75.15, 68,800 and some change, and historic preservation would receive almost 14,000. Um, of course, it continues to go up at 6.5%. Um, the take would be 99,000, almost 500. Um, and the chamber would then get close to 75,000 and historic would get close to 15,000. So just to show you some of the differences in numbers, um, those questions didn't come up at the Tourism Commission. I had the data prepared, but it was a pretty staunch opposition, uh, at least that was my understanding and what I took away from the meeting. So normally, like I said, um, since this isn't pretty, it, this isn't very orthodox and I would never come to the full village board to try and overrule or override anybody that I felt was being reasonable. But since the conversations have been happening with the Tourism Commission since the year 2000 and no action has been taken, and the chalet and the Swiss historical village are in real significant need, I feel compelled to bring it here and see if there's anything that the full, full village board can do. I think in line with that, you're bringing this under the auspices of the historical preservation. 
um, and that's separate from the tourism. But um, I would like to see in the very, very, very near future a full accounting of of what our festivals um, cost us as a village mm -hmm. and what we get in return uh, for village government mm -hmm. operational expenses. Um, I, I know it's out there somewhere, but um, I think this whole discussion is is uh, one and the same tourism historical preservation tax rates, which, which I think really need to go, yeah. need to go up, but yeah. um, I have the feeling that there are a lot of, I, I know, it's not a feeling, I know there are a lot of people in the community that are saying, you know, we're more and more and more inconvenienced and probably spending money on various festivals as village operational expenses, what do we get in return? I don't have an answer for them. I'm sure they I hope they pay their way, but yeah. um, I think this is all the same discussion. Well, and we should have an answer to that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm we just saying. Should be the <laughs> I'm just saying this. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point, point. and I would also say too that the residents of the village, in my opinion, would probably rather see the room tax rate go up than their own taxes. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you would like to see? I would. I mean, put on in an ideal world, I would love to see an action item on the agenda for the 18th, in which we could discuss updating the ordinances to increase the room tax first of all, and then update the distribution of the room tax proceeds. Um, so, would you do that in the form of a motion? Well, I believe, um, just as a yeah, agenda item. I don't think that we can do anything now, but um, yeah, well, we'd the, like to request the, it as the, an agenda. The right. action item would be to put an item on the 12-18 meeting agenda. That, that is an appropriate action item for tonight's meeting okay. based upon the discussion. Does that require a motion? Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion then that we put an um, item on the December 18th agenda to discuss potential action related to updating Chapter 269 of the Municipal Code related to the room tax in the village. I would also, as part of that motion, request that we issue a public hearing notice, or, or what, whatever that language is called. Yeah, and what that would entail is um, publishing uh, notice of this discussion in the newspaper. Um, it wouldn't be this week's edition, but it would be next week's edition. Two are to be done simultaneously. One mm -hmm. yep. second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, item nine, we're going to appoint a closed session. I would make a motion to convene into closed session. Second. Do we need a roll call? We do. Um, Barb. Yes. Sean. Yes. Peggy? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Petra? Yes. Roger? Yes. You are close to me. So then to finish business from closed session, I would like to make a motion that we um, continue um, to support continued work on completion of phase one of the electrical system work plan and that we also proceed with electrical rate case study to determine funding for additional phases of the electrical system work plan. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No security. Item 11, administrator's report. Yes, uh, just a couple of uh, notes uh, for your calendar. Uh, again, uh, just a reminder that uh, next week, Monday, December 10th, uh, we've got the joint meeting with the New Glarus School Board, and they've also asked to invite the, anyone from the town board uh, that might be interested in attending. Uh, that meeting will be at 6 p.m. It'll be at New Glarus High School in the library, so at 1701 2nd Street is the address. And in terms of uh, agenda items for discussion, uh, what, what uh, Dr. Thayer, the superintendent, and I were thinking were, uh, we'd start with welcome and introductions, 
Uh, then there'd be a discussion, kind of the village giving an overview of kind of our thoughts on facilities and fields planning uh, from our perspective in the future. And then they would give kind of a comparable presentation from the school board's uh, perspective on what they've got on their radar for facilities and plans. You know, full well noting that this is hopefully the first of a number of meetings, you know, that the, that the boards will get together on a more frequent basis and continue conversations on other items if need be. Um, I, I will say they do have another meeting at 7.15 that evening, so there is a little bit of a hard deadline for this first meeting, but like I said, likely this will be the first of a couple meetings for that. Um, you, um, I found out from someone that it's just it's the facilities committee that yep. will be meeting with, not the full board. Uh, well, they, they've noticed it for the facilities committee because there's the way that they need to notice their meetings, but they've invited the full school board to attend, and it's likely that the majority will attend. It's just, their rules are different than ours in terms of what constitutes a special meeting, and they have different notice classifications, so that's why they noticed it that way. But the invitation ha will have gone out to the full school board. Yep. There. Uh, and then another item for your calendar. Uh, so next week, Wednesday the 12th uh, at 5.30 p.m., we're looking to do an uh, informational meeting for uh, the Third Avenue reconstruction project. So uh, those residents that would be kind of on the, the stretch from 2nd Street uh, to 6th Street uh, will have been provided notice uh, of this meeting. It's to be pretty informal, um, just so that those residents can come and learn more about the project. Pat Rank from Strand uh, will be here to provide kind of an overview of the project and answer questions. Again, this is kind of the first um, in a number of steps as we look to start the bidding process in 2019, but just to give people a, a heads up on uh, what's going to be happening there. So that meeting will be 5.30, and I believe we'll be in the back community uh, for that. 5.30 when? Uh, next week, Wednesday, <coughs> so the 12th. Uh, 12, 12. Uh, and then lastly, I did send an email to the full board uh, this morning uh, about kind of what's going on uh, with me. Um, uh, I'll have more details probably in the next couple of days, uh, but I'll, I'll keep you informed about that. And again, um, like I said, it's, it's nothing about the work I'm doing here. I've enjoyed my time here. And, uh, as I was telling Roger, it's been something that's been weighing on me for you know a while since I got the offer. Uh, it's a very difficult decision. Um, but it's just kind of something I just had to consider from a family perspective. So. Mm -hmm. um, but we will start some of the transition work uh, once I know that everything has been um, finalized on the other end, but we'll be making contacts with uh, firms that do recruitment and have them on board, or have a proposal to you likely for your meeting on the 18th to get that process going as well. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that's what I have for now. Okay. Well, with that being said, I wish you all the best, and it's been great working with you. And you do a great job, and yeah. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna miss you. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I uh, totally understand. I mean, that uh, that kind of opportunity doesn't come along every day either. So it's actually quite an honor that someone from here would. If I get a traffic ticket in Monona, I expect to call you up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know you're an administrator. Any further business? Hearing none, we are adjourned.